نخستین دیدار دکتر آلخو ویدال کوادراس در پاریس پس از ترور در مادرید توسط مزدوران خامنه ای دکتر آل خوویدال کوادراس متولد 1945 در بارسلون در اسپانیا در سال 1975 دکترای فیزیک اتمی گرفت. او در سالهای بعد در دانشگاه های مختلف پروفسور فیزیک اتمی بود و جوایز گوناگون در همین رشته دریافت کرده است. از جمله در سال 1983 برنده جایزه اول سازمان انرژی اتمی سیمات در اسپانیا شد. آلخوبیدال در سالهای 1984 تا 1992 عضو شورای مانیتورینگ امنیت اتمی و حفاظت رادیولوژیک کاتالونیا و مدیر سرویس فیزیک پرتویی در دانشگاه بارسلون بود. وی فعالیت‌های تحقیقاتی خود را همچنین در مرکز تحقیقات اتمی استراسبورگ فرانسه و دانشگاه دوبلین ایرلند انجام داده و در آنجا هم تدریس کرده است. آلخو ویدال کوادراس از سال 1988 تا 1996 نماینده پارلمان کاتالونیا و از 1991 تا 1996 رئیس حزب مردم در کاتالونیا بود. سپس تا سال 1999 با رأی مردم سناتور اسپانیا شد. پس از آن با پیروزی در انتخابات پارلمان اروپا در سه دوره پی در پی در مجموع به مدت پانزده سال نماینده و نایب رئیس پارلمان اروپا بود. او تنها فردی است که به مدت پانزده سال به طور مستمر در مقام نایب رئیسی این پارلمان بوده است. این شامل دوره ای از سال 2004 تا 2007 است که او در موضع نایب رئیس اول قرار داشت. دکتر آلخو ویدال کوادراس در سال 2008 عنوان نماینده سال پارلمان اروپا را کسب کرد. وی همچنین در سال 2008 به خاطر فعالیت‌هایش در زمینه مشکلات مربوط به انرژی نشان لژیون دونور فرانسه را دریافت کرد. سفیر فرانسه در آوریل 2008 به نمایندگی از رئیس جمهور این کشور نشان لژیون دونور را در بروکسر به پروفسور آلخو ویدال کوادراس اهدا کرد. آقای ویدال در همان سال 2008 به همراه شمار دیگری از نمایندگان پارلمان اروپا به منظور هماهنگی فعالیت ها برای خارج کردن نام مجاهدین از لیست های استعماری کمیته بین المللی در جستجوی ادالت را تأسیس کرد. این کمیته در سال 2014 به طور رسمی در بروکسل ثبت شده است. کمیته بین المللی در جستجوی ادالت به ریاست پروفسور ویدال کوادراس در سالهای اخیر فعالیت های بین المللی گسترده سیاسی و اجتماعی و فرهنگی و مطبوعاتی شامل تهیه جزوات و کتاب هایی درباره وضعیت رژیم و مبارزه مردم و مقاومت ایران و همچنین برگزاری کنفرانس های بین المللی داشته است. Really, there's a few things I can say after Mrs. Rajabi's speech and Alejo's one. Uh, mainly, I would like to thank uh, all the signs of support we've received um, during these months. On behalf of the whole family, Alejo's uh, daughters, son, and myself, uh, that came from all of you here in France, 
in Brussels, in the USA, uh, from Ashra 3, but mainly the one uh, that came from inside Iran. Really, Alejo was, was really uh, moved and comfort to see these people risking their lives inside Iran uh, to hold banners and pictures of him, uh, trying to convey him their support. Really, we appreciate it very much. As you know very well, uh, Alejo is a man of strong convictions and principles, and once he believes in a cause, he will fight it to the end. Against, <laughs> no matter the risk, no matter the, the, the sacrifices, he will follow it to the end. But that's why I admire you so much, really. But all this said, the truth is that supporting your cause, supporting uh, the 10 point plan of Mrs. Rajavi is not an option. It's not an option, but a duty to any person in this world who wants the prevailing of human rights democracy, and uh, freedom in the whole world, not only in Iran. So we don't have a, we don't have a choice. That's why uh, I would like to, to thank you once again for all your hard struggle and sacrifices for so many years uh, for the sake of the whole humankind, I will say, mankind. And uh, just tell you that you have the right on your side and only evil can oppose you and try to defeat you. That's all. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, my goodness. Uh, Mrs. Rajavi, Ampera, Alejo. How on earth could the mullahs think that they could kill a man of steel like this? <laughs> when Ali telephoned me within hours of the attempted assassination to inform me of what had happened, and I was, of course, shocked to the core, and then I heard that Alejo, bleeding in the ambulance, unsure whether he was going to live or die, got his mobile phone out and typed one word, Iran. He knew at that point who was guilty of this attempted assassination. But Alejo, let me say to you and Ampera, your life is a huge victory for the PMOI and a huge defeat for the Mullahs. A year ago, when Asadullah Asadi, the so-called diplomat, assassin was released from prison by the Belgians on an absurd prisoner swap deal for a hostage who the Mullahs had taken and accused of a sham charge of espionage. Alejo and me and Paulo Casaca wrote to Josep Borrell, the chief diplomat of the European Union, and said, 
allowing this man to be released undercuts the whole concept of European justice. It provides impunity for the Iranian regime. And now they will be prepared to commit another assassination, another murder, another bomb attack. We got no reply. And a year later, I wrote again with Paolo, because Alejo was in hospital recovering from the attempted assassination. And on behalf of the ISJ, Paolo and I wrote again to Burrell, saying, we warned you this would happen, and now look at what they have tried to do. They have tried to kill our friend, our colleague, a former vice president of the European Parliament. And it's because you did nothing. Treat these people as the criminals they are. Shut their embassies, withdraw our ambassadors, and send these people to the hell that they deserve to visit. Alejo, it is uh, such a great relief that you are here and healthy and able to stand up and speak to us today. But I should tell everyone that every Thursday uh, since we retired from the European Parliament, we worked together for 15 years on behalf and working hard for the PMOI, the NCRI, the mullahs really have to learn the lesson that you cannot stop Alejo Vidal Cuadras. We are members of the resistance. We are proud to be on the blacklist and we will continue to fight where injustice exists. We will continue to fight that injustice. Thank you for your support. Thank you, Aleko. Thank you, Amparo. Thank you, Madam Rajavi.